This is part 92 of C-Sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the significance of thread.join and thread.easily functions with an example. Thread.join blocks the current thread and makes it wait until the thread on which join method is invoked completes. Join method also has a overload where we can specify the timeout. If we don't specify the timeout, the calling thread waits indefinitely until the thread on which join is invoked completes. This overloaded join method where we can specify the timeout returns a boolean. True if the thread has terminated, otherwise false. Join is particularly useful when we need to wait and collect results from a thread execution or if we need to do some cleanup after the thread has completed. Is alive returns boolean. True if the thread is still executing, otherwise false. Let's look at the usage of these two functions with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. At the moment, here we have got two static functions, thread1 function and thread2 function. Within the main method, let's actually print a message saying main started. And then the main function is going to create a worker thread. Let's call it T1. And let's make this thread execute this thread1 function. So program dot thread1 function. And then let's start thread1. In a similar fashion, let's create another thread and make that execute thread2 function. And finally, let's print a message stating main completed. All right, let's go ahead and run this now. OK, look at the order in which these messages are printed. So first line is going to be main started. And then it prints thread1 function started. That's basically because we created thread1. This thread1 is going to execute that function. So it printed that message there. And notice that next we get main completed and then thread2 function started. So what is happening here? Now main function here, this main function, you know, when we run the program, we get one thread for free. That's our main thread. You know, that's going to print this message. And then the main thread is now creating two additional threads. That is thread one and thread two. So once the main thread creates an additional thread, that is thread one, and once it starts executing thread one function, you know, the main thread will not wait for that thread one to complete. It will proceed to the next line. So here in the next line, it's creating another thread and then starting that thread. Again, here at this point, the main thread will not wait for either thread one or thread two to complete their work. You know, main thread, once it start, uh, starts the worker threads, it's going to proceed by default to the next line, um, you know, in order to execute that. Okay, so sometimes, you know, we may need to make the main thread wait while worker threads are doing their work you know, probably because we want to collect the result, you know, of the worker threads. And then based on that, we want the main thread to do something. So those are some, you know, situations where we want the main thread to wait until, you know, this thread one and thread two completes. That's when join is particularly useful. Okay, so look at this. If I run this program once again, you know, we get a different output. Look at that main started, thread one function started, thread two function started, and then main completed. Okay, so every time we run this program, these statements are not guaranteed to be printed in any particular order. Okay, so that's the nature of multi threaded programming. So basically, if you want to force the main thread to wait, until these worker threads complete their execution, then you will have to use join method. So now let's say, you know, we started thread one and thread two. Now, if we want to force this main thread to wait until this thread one and thread two complete, all we are going to do is thread one dot join. Now, you know, once this line is executed, the main thread is going to suspend its execution and wait for thread one to return from its method. Okay, so once 
you know this line has completed its execution we know that thread1 has returned so we can basically say thread1 function completed similarly t2 dot join now again the main thread is going to wait until thread2 completes its execution and returns okay now let's go ahead and run this now no matter how many times you run this program you're going to get the same output so thread1 function started thread2 function started thread1 function completed thread2 function completed and then main completed okay so here we are basically forcing the main thread to wait until thread 1 and thread 2 complete by using the join method All right now let's actually put you know some sleep time here actually let's make this thread sleep for 5 seconds so thread dot sleep and let's specify the time in milliseconds 5000 milliseconds is um, 5 seconds and let's say thread1 function is about to return okay so basically that five seconds have elapsed and it's about to return that's what is the message we're printing here all right now let's go ahead and run this and see what output we get so thread1 function started thread2 function started so you know the main thread is waiting for you know thread1 to complete and then once thread1 has completed then you know it, it finished thread two you know that's what is the message that's printed and then main completed okay now there is another overload of this join method where we can specify the timeout so basically there are three overloaded versions you know the second overloaded version we can specify the timeout value in milliseconds so what is this timeout that's basically the time that we are willing to wait until you know the thread completes its execution so for example here if we specify 1000 milliseconds then the main thread is going to wait only for 1000 milliseconds that is one second until this thread one returns if thread one doesn't return within that timeout value then the main thread you know will will continue to execute from the line after that okay and one more thing to notice here this overloaded version where we can specify the timeout returns boolean that is true or false so it returns true in case if the method has completed execution and if it has returned otherwise false so let's basically say if t1 dot join you know of thousand milliseconds then we know that thread one function has completed else let's print a message saying thread1 function has not completed in one second okay so let's go ahead and run this and see what output we get so look at that thread1 function started thread2 function started thread1 function has not completed in one second and so it com continued to the next line thread2 function completed main completed and then after that you know thread one function you know came out from sleep and then you know this message is basically printed at that point of time okay all right let's change this function slightly so here we are saying thread two function completed but before we say main completed we let's actually check you know whether if thread one is still alive or not meaning whether if it is still processing or not so t1 dot is alive so basically this method is returning a boolean and that boolean indicates uh, the execution status of the current thread whether if it has been completed or it is still processing if it is still processing then it is going to return true otherwise false so if t1 dot is alive we know that thread1 is still doing its work so let's actually print a message saying thread1 function is still doing its work else if it's not alive then we know for sure thread1 has completed so let's print that message right here let's go ahead and run this 
So thread1 function started, thread2 function started, thread1 function has not completed in one second, thread2 function completed, and then you know it checks this is alive actually returned false there, I mean true there, and as a result thread1 function is still doing its work, that's what is the message printed, and then it prints main completed, and then after that line is printed, you know, thread1 function has finished its job, so it's going to print that message there, thread1 function is about to return. Now let's say we want to repeatedly, you know, check whether if thread1 is alive or not, maybe every uh, 500 milliseconds, and in order to do that, let's actually put this in a for loop. So for int i is equal to 1, let's say i less than or equal to 10, i plus plus. Now if t1 dot is alive, if it is still alive, let's print this message, thread1 function is still doing its work, and then let's make the current thread sleep for maybe 500 milliseconds. Okay. If it is not alive, meaning it has completed execution, then in that case, print this message, thread1 function completed, and then maybe break out of the loop, because there's no point in checking. We know that it has completed execution. Okay, with this change, let's go ahead and run this and see what output we get. So thread1 function started, thread2 function started. Look at this here, it's in that loop, it's checking. And then look at what we get. Thread1 function is about to return thread1 function completed, and finally main completed. So basically the idea here is to understand the purpose of isAlive and thread.join, and we have seen the usage of them with the help of this example. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.